My name is Kenny Raines and I'm with LaCroix Precision Optics. Today we're going to be taking you on a tour of our facility and we're going to show you how we go from print to prototype and then also how you can scale from prototype to production all right here in one facility in Batesville, Arkansas. So after you've designed your product, you've got your prints, now you need to go out for an RFQ. So you come to us, send us a quote, send us your prints. What we'll do is we'll look at your prints and our job as engineers is to figure out can we make it, how do we make it, and then how much should it cost, at which we'll send you a formal quote, we'll note any exceptions that we have to take, and we'll work with you to provide you feedback on manufacturability of your product. So now that you've purchased the optics, our first step is to order material. So the immediate decision to be made is whether we go with cut disc blanks or if we go with molded blanks. What we do here at LaCroix is we go with a near net shape, meaning we're gonna make the part a little bit bigger in diameter and a little bit thicker than what it needs to be for the final shape so that we can take material off of surface one and off surface two as well as the diameter. So for prototypes you're going to tend to use cut disc blanks. In low volume cut disc blanks tend to be more economic and you can also get them faster. We can tend to get cut disc blanks anywhere from five to ten business days but typically three to four weeks. For molded blanks your cost tends to be a lot lower but it makes more sense in volume. There are some cases for low volume production of very rare materials or very big blanks that it makes sense to go molded as well. So after we've received the blanks, our first step in the process is to start out in grinding. And so we're here with Rob, one of our CNC grinding operators. And what we'll do is we'll actually load the blank into our CNC grinding machine. And in this case, we're doing a three-step grind with a rough diamond, a fine diamond, and then a super fine diamond that produces a near polished surface, minimizing uh, subsurface damage as well as roughness on the lens to prepare it for CNC polishing. At this step, Rob's trying to dial in the center thickness to maintain center thickness tolerances. He's also checking what that grind is looking like as far as surface quality and ensuring that there's no deep scratches or things that can't be removed in polishing. So after we've ground the part, what we're gonna do now is polish the part over in CNC polishing with Sabrina, one of our operators. So we take our ground blank and we're gonna go ahead and run it through polishing. What we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to achieve better surface quality, our optical power and irregularity. We've got interferometers at every single station. We have over 40 interferometers at LaCroix Precision Optics. And so Sabrina is going to be checking all of these different tolerances to make sure that they meet your spec. So whenever we produce an aspheric surface, we typically process the spherical side or the Plano side first, and then we'll block it, or we can also put it in a holder depending on what the tolerances are. In this case, we've got them mounted on a blocker, and we will typically do a two-step, possibly even a three-step grinding process, uh, starting out with an initial uh, roughing in of the A-sphere from a best fit sphere into the actual aspheric form. And so we're going to input the departure on your aspheric lens. In this case, we're processing the rough grind with a ring tool, and then we'll finish off with a periphery wheel to do the fine grinding. Uh, convex A-spheres tend to be a lot easier to produce than a concave A-sphere. And also your limitation on your concave A-spheres, if you have a really steep local radius, we've got to have a tool that can fit inside that concave radius. And so about 15 millimeters tends to be the smallest. And after that, you're going to start having some issues. Um, anytime that you can make an A-sphere convex, it will typically be easier to produce. So our typical process whenever we produce an A-sphere is we'll do the initial best fit sphere. After that, we'll impart the departure with a rough grind. Then we'll do a fine grind, at which point we'll go ahead and take a measurement using, in this case, a profilometer. And we're going to measure what the form error is from the theoretical form of the A-sphere. That is called our peak to valley form error of which will come on a specification from you via your print. And we're gonna check and see where we're at uh, before polishing. Then we'll do a gray out or pre-polish. We'll once again check using either the profilometer or we'll use our 3D metrology, at which point we'll do a final polish to try to reach the specified form error or slope error. So this is our 3D metrology that we can use to measure A-spheres with. This helps us to see any asymmetry. The issue that you have with a profilometer is you may be able to see asymmetry, but you're going to interpolate a 3D image of that asymmetry to make it symmetric. This allows us to feed asymmetric profiles back into our machines to produce a uh, tool path that will correct that asymmetry. So this is a really good piece of metrology for us for producing A-spheres. 
So after we've got our initial measurement on our profilometer, we're gonna feed that into our polisher. We've got some software that will figure out a, a tool path in order to minimize the form error. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock down the high points to the low points, and that's how we're gonna reduce that form error. In this case, we're polishing with a pad on our status low SPS 200, and we're going to do that pre-polish. We'll take a measurement, and then we'll do a post-polish. This is an iterative uh, process in which if it's a tighter tolerance, we may have to do more steps of continuing to go in between metrology and polishing and possibly even finish it off on MRF. So we're here with Justin Tracy in our advanced processing department over with our two MRF machines. And specifically what we're gonna talk about is whenever you need tighter tolerances, whether it's spherical parts, whether it's A-spheres, we would typically use MRF as an option. So Justin, what kind of specifications can somebody achieve uh, using MRF technology on a spherical lens? Uh, the main limit really comes down to how well you can measure it. Uh, generally speaking, I'd say about lambda by 20 mm -hmm. is a, a, a good general purpose guideline to go by. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then also, too, whenever we do run some ACERs over here, some, some higher quality ACERs where we're trying to control form error, trying to control slope error, you know, what are, what are some of the better values that we've been able to hold and then what maybe something that's typical? Yeah, we've seen values for slope error off the profilometer in the uh, 0 0.05 microns per millimeter range. Uh, typically, you can hit at least 0.2, no problem. Even 0.1 generally isn't an issue. Right. And, and another thing to keep in mind is that's highly dependent on the geometry. One limitation that you're going to have is if you have a really steep concave radius, then you got to have a really small wheel versus yeah. on a convex or plano, you might be able to specify a tighter tolerance and we might be able to achieve that. But this is an option that we offer at LaCroix. We've got two MRF machines as well as state-of-the-art metrology with our phase shifting interferometers uh, to be able to help offer you higher quality parts. Now we're in CNC centering. So far in our process, we've only been working on the two optical surfaces. At this point, we're gonna actually work on the diameter as well as aligning the mechanical and optical axis. Two of the things that we're gonna work on on this particular case is we're actually putting a sag onto this part, the distance from the radius to the top of the flap, as well as working on the diameter. We're aligning the optical axis to the mechanical axis within a given tolerance. Typically, we like to see that in optical deviation. So in this case, Kevin, who's operating in this department, is gonna be checking the diameter to make sure it's within tolerance, as well as the wedge or optical deviation, the sag and the flat size. Once all those are within tolerance, he'll send the part on to continue the process. So after we've ground and polished both sides, we've gone through centering, at this point we need to get the optic clean. So right now we're with Shauna, we're in hand cleaning. So Shauna is going to go ahead and clean the optic. She's going to ensure that there's no oil, there's no cerium. Uh, get any residue off of the part from processing before we go to coating. So after the part has been processed on both optical surfaces, we're going to verify the optical surface with a phase shifting interferometer. This is going to ensure that the part meets your spec. So we're back here in our tool room. One of the advantages that we offer here at LaCroix is the ability to make our own tooling here in-house. So whether it's spot tools for volume, whether it's a coating fixture that allows you a bigger clear aperture on your part, we make all that right here at LaCroix. So now you've had your prototypes made and it's time to scale up to volume. So one great thing with LaCroix Precision Optics is we can take you from prototypes for your two-piece, your five-piece, your 10-piece initial proof of concept, all the way to volume protection. Whether volume for you is 100 pieces or 10,000 pieces, we can make all the way up to 100,000 pieces depending on the part. You can do it all right here in one facility. So whenever we go to volume production, if the glass type allows, we definitely want to try to push for molded blanks. Molded blanks are going to be much lower in cost, especially because we've got a great relationship with Shot and O'Hara to be able to source the glass directly from them. Uh, there are cases that you can't get molded blanks, uh, such as for laser optics using Fusilica, but we can also get good pricing on those blanks as well. So whenever you scale up in volume, we can really try to help out by lowering your cost. So our first step in the conventional process uh, whenever we're processing spherical radiuses is we're going to try to get them on a tool. Tool is the most efficient way to run spherical optics. You can essentially treat the radius like it's a continual radius and load multiple parts per tool. We can make these tools in-house here at LaCroix, uh, whether it's spot tools, we have against the iron tools, there's a variety of different methods dependent on the geometry and the volume of the part that you're trying to run. And so Ms. K is going to block the parts on the tool as well as de-block the parts. Uh, we tend to do that in one operation once we have continuous flow of volume production. Okay, so after we've gone through blocking, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go to generating. So you can consider this your real rough cut. So we've got rougher diamonds, whether it's a 46 micron grit, 76 micron grit. What we're trying to do is, is manual is trying to uh, take the radius a little bit closer to what it needs to be, as well as the center thickness. So manual is going to be checking what the radius is with a spherometer ring. It's a comparative measurement to a reference sphere. Uh, we've got a variety of test glasses in stock that's posted on our website. So that way we can try to lower the cost of tooling, as well as uh, whether it's picking from a custom test class, we can make a custom test class, but you're gonna save money if you can utilize some of the test classes and tooling that we have. So after we've been through generating, we've done our initial rough cut, what we're gonna do now is go to grinding and fine grinding. So we're using finer and finer grit diamonds to uh, cut a closer radius to what it should be. We've got tolerances that we specify in manufacturing in order to get closer to what the radiuses need to be as well as monitoring the center thickness. Uh, once again, this is a multiple tool, but we also can do singles as well in this department. We can do loose abrasive grinding as well as fixed abrasive grinding. And it's all gonna be dependent on the glass type as well as the part geometry as to which method we're going to use. So after we've gone through grinding, what we're gonna do now is begin our polishing process. So with polishing, we've got two steps, a variety of different methods that we can polish parts out. We can use pads or we can use pitch. Uh, once again, this, determ this is determined by uh, what the optical power and regularity is, what the surface quality needs to be, surface roughness as far as how many angstroms we're trying to achieve. Uh, and it's also very dependent on the glass type. Some glass types are more thermally sensitive and so we, de we have developed custom processes for those types of glasses, whether it's SFBL 51 or 53. Uh, and so the part really is what drives the process. But we've got a variety of different methods that we can process lenses with. So we're here in our Plano department where we process flat. So if you had a Plano convex lens, our journey is typically going to start out doing the flat first. We would start out on our Blanchard grinders to do our rough grind. Then we've got a loose abrasive uh, fine grind as well as a pre-polish and final polish on a pitch lap. We process multiple optics at the same time. So we do tools where we put anywhere from 10 to a few hundred optics on one tool and we process them all at the same time. This is a very efficient department. We can also process prisms and wedges here. This is our conventional centering department where we produce very high volume optics. There's some parts that we produce over 5,000 parts per month. Uh, we've got some auto loading centering machines. We have laser alignment where we can align the optical and mechanical axis for very tight deviation specifications. Uh, these machines can also hold very tight diameter tolerances when properly dialed in. The good thing with this department is it's very cost effective uh, for volume optics, but we still have our CNC centering department in case you have any odd shapes, tight sags, uh, as well as tight diameter tolerances. So we're here in our cleaning department. So typically we'll come over here after we de-block the parts from a tool, whether it's in our final department or in our conventional departments. Uh, we're coming out of centering and we're trying to remove any pitch, any oil, and uh, prepare the parts for inspection, prepare the parts for coating. We're just trying to make sure that any debris or uh, residue that was on the lens is removed before, especially before coating. So here in our matching and cementing department, this is where we assemble acromats. Uh, we're able to produce very high volume acromats, anywhere from hundreds to thousands per week, uh, depending on what the part's geometry is. We also can produce anywhere from smaller acromats in the four or five millimeter plus range, all the way to three or four inch acromats, uh, whether that's spherical lenses, aspheric acromats, or cubes using prisms. So now that we've gone ahead and we've cleaned the part, we've checked to make sure that the surfaces are correct with regards to optical power and regularity. What we're gonna verify at this step in inspection is we're gonna look at the surface quality, we're gonna check to make sure that the part's dimensionally correct with regards to center thickness, dimensional tolerances like diameter, sags, right before we go to coating uh, so that after we coat the part, we know that the part's good as well. So we're here in coating. What we're gonna do now is put optical coatings, whether that's anti-reflective coatings, reflective coatings, beam splitters in our optical coating chamber. We're monitoring the thickness of the film as we put the film on. We've also got an in-house coating engineer to help with custom designs, uh, but we can coat various different types of optical glass and we can help make filters, uh, but we specialize in anti-reflective and reflective coatings. So once your part is complete, once it's been coated, both sides have been processed, the diameter's correct, 
We'll come in here to our inspection department where we'll verify using the trioptics optocentric, we can verify what the deviation or wedge is, as well as what the focal length is. Uh, verifying focal length is a good way for us also to double check what the material is uh, by verifying the index. Uh, we do this standard with all optics, whether you provide a focal length or not. Uh, we also have a white light interferometer that we can measure surface roughness. Uh, typical surface roughness from a grounded polished lens can be anywhere from 4 angstroms to 10 angstroms, depending on what the process is. And uh, we've also got a CMM, we've got an optical comparator, as well as some CT measuring machines. So after the part has been manufactured and the part is complete, it's been checked for surface quality, it's also been checked for dimensional accuracy, it's been coded if coding was needed. The parts are packaged and shipped out to you.